Welcome to the Molecular Therapy Podcast. I'm Dr. Rory Bricker anthony Scientific Editor of the Molecular Therapy Family of Journals. This episode features a conversation between Dr. Roland Herzog, Editor-in-Chief of Molecular Therapy and Professor of Pediatrics at Indiana University, and Dr. Norbert Party, Assistant Professor of Microbiology at the Perlman School of Medicine of University of Pennsylvania. They will discuss a recent article published in the September issue of Molecular Therapy by Dr. Party and colleagues titled, Development of an mRNA Lipid Nanoparticle Vaccine Against Lyme Disease. Before we get started, I'd like to take a moment to remind everyone that registration for the ASGCT 27th Annual Meeting is now open, and there's never been a better time to join the Society. ASGCT members save $380 on registration rates, and ASGCT membership runs all the way through 2024. Additional member benefits include free virtual professional development events, discounted publication fees, and ASGCT's Molecular Therapy Family of Journals, preferred registration rates for other ASGCT events like the Policy Summit and Spotlight on Immuno-Oncology and so much more. The ASGCT annual meeting is the premier annual event in cell and gene therapy, and there's no better way to experience it than as an ASGCT member. So I hope you'll join us May 7th through 11th at the Baltimore Convention Center for the annual meeting. Visit annualmeeting.asgct.org to learn more and to register. Now let's hand it off to Molecular Therapy Editor-in-Chief. Dr. Roland Herzog. It's a pleasure to have this uh, conversation uh, with Dr. Norbert Party uh, about his molecular therapy paper that he recently published uh, and that has been drawing a lot of attention. Um, these are obviously exciting times uh, in the field of uh, mRNA uh, development. Uh, I actually just recently got my uh, COVID booster shot uh, and a Nobel Prize in Medicine was awarded uh, for development of this uh, type of uh, technology. And so I would like to ask you a few questions, both about your paper specifically, and also some more general questions about mRNA vaccine development and where you think the field is heading. Sounds good, thank you. And again, thank you very much again for the invitation. Uh, you're very welcome, glad to have you. So let me start by asking you, um, the mRNA uh, vaccine platform uh, has been proven to be quite versatile uh, with applications ranging from infectious diseases to cancer. And so my qu first question would be, what led you and your research team to focus on Lyme disease and the pathogens outer surface antigen A? Thank you very much. Uh, uh, so um, my lab has uh, several infectious disease vaccine programs, and we also stepped into the field of uh, uh, mRNA-based um, cancer vaccines. Uh, we developed uh, multiple preclinical vaccines against uh, various viruses, primarily. And uh, since Lyme disease is, is the most common vector-borne illness in the United States and uh, no vaccine is available uh, against Lyme, we, uh, we decided to, um, uh, to design and develop and test uh, a vaccine using the nucleoside-modified messenger RNA uh, lipid nanoparticle vaccine platform. The reason why we picked this uh, protein called OSPE or outer surface protein A, uh, because it's a very, very good vaccine target and um, uh, it can in, uh, we can induce very strong immune responses against uh, OSPE uh, that can uh, protect against uh, uh, infection. And this was the main reason why we picked this antigen. 
And we also know that uh, the modified uh, messenger RNA lipid nanoparticle vaccine platform is a really good antibody-driven vaccine. It can also induce CD T cell responses, but, uh, but I uh, truly believe that it's, it's exceptional. It's, it's uh, ability to induce uh, very strong T follicular helper cell responses and, and, uh, and antibody responses. And again, OSPE is just a fantastic um, uh, antigen uh, because it is pretty conserved and uh, it can uh, induce protection from infection. I see. So actually in 2020, we noticed that you published a, another research article in molecular therapy where you uh, targeted influenza and your vaccine was going after multiple antigens, multiple targets of the pathogen. So can you give us a few insights into that work and maybe explain if you believe that there are lessons learned that could apply for the Lyme disease as well? Yes, I'm, I'm very happy to talk about it. So um, my lab has a very successful uh, universal influenza vaccine program and uh, we use uh, messenger RNA uh, for, this, uh, for the developing uh, universal influenza vaccines. One of the reasons why I really believe that uh, the mRNA lipid nanoparticle platform is really ideal um, for this purpose, because um, we can uh, include more than one antigen encoding messenger RNA uh, in a single uh, formulation. And uh, with this, we can uh, either target uh, several antigens uh, of uh, a single uh, influenza virus strain, or we can target uh, several strains or multiple strains with a, with a single vaccine formulation. So this is, uh, I think, a huge advantage uh, of, uh, <clears throat> of the messenger RNA platform. And like you said, uh, we published um, a four component, a tetravalent um, uh, influenza vaccine targeting um, influenza A group one viruses uh, in 2020. In this vaccine, we used uh, four different antigens, hemagglutinin, uh, neuraminidase, the matrix protein two and the nucleoprotein encoding RNA was used in this study. And uh, we demonstrated that uh, this vaccine, this combination vaccine can use uh, potent uh, protective immune responses against uh, uh, a broad panel, panel of uh, uh, influenza A uh, viruses. Uh, we also demonstrated, this, is, this was very important, we could also demonstrate that uh, so we could induce uh, T cell responses and antibody responses uh, against uh, every single uh, vaccine component. So this is proof of concept for the viability of this multivalent approach. And, uh, and, and I think this can be applied uh, to many other, uh, many other infectious disease vaccines uh, as well. So it, it's probably possible to come up with uh, a vaccine, uh, a multivalent vaccine against other pathogens, other types of viruses, or, or even other uh, uh, pathogens, and and uh, the same approach was used uh, in a publication with uh, Errol Fikri uh, to target uh, multiple uh, uh, salivary uh, uh, proteins. Yeah, so as you uh, noted actually in, in your recent paper that the OSPA uh, mRNA vaccine that you developed is actually one of the first mRNA vaccines to target non-viral pathogens, and mm -hmm. you just explain how much of your uh, initial work focused on viruses. Are there unique challenges in targeting non-viral pathogens versus viruses? Can you maybe explain that a little bit? Yes, so um, most viruses uh, have, uh, or many viruses I should say, have a small number uh, of, uh, of genes. And uh, this means that uh, uh, we can probably easily figure out what to target uh, but the problem with the uh, with the bacteria and fungi and uh, 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 some parasites uh, is that uh, they are very very big. So they uh, have potentially hundreds or thousands of genes, and many times uh, uh, we really don't know what to target, or uh, people couldn't determine uh, correlates of vaccine protection. Uh, so many times you don't know uh, what to target, what kind of immune response uh, we need to induce, uh, whether it is CD8 uh, uh, T cell uh, mediated, uh, the protection is CD8 T cell mediated or antibody mediated, or both are critical. And, uh, and this, this causes issues with, uh, with many, many uh, vaccines that target uh, non-viral uh, pathogens. And this is also true for, again, multiple uh, bacteria. 
Wow. So that actually uh, highlights just uh, what a success it's been that you have been able to target the Lyme disease pathogen in this manner. Um, awesome. It, it quite... varies. Some, uh, the, some, um, in, for, for some bacteria, we do know what to target. And uh, in this sense, uh, OSPE was already uh, uh, published as a, as a very uh, good uh, vaccine target. But we are not that lucky with many other uh, bacteria and other pathogens because, again, we simply don't know what uh, uh, proteins should be targeted. It's also possible that there are too many. So it's not uh, we cannot really squeeze 30, 40, 50 uh, um, antigen encoding mRNAs into a single uh, vaccine, uh, in my opinion. So uh, uh, th this can this can cause uh, a, a big issue. Which brings me to my next question, which is, uh, where do you see your work going? What uh, what targets uh, are you after? Uh, what diseases uh, are you pursuing? Uh, where where do you go from here? So uh, uh, I, the major focus of my lab is, is uh, the development of universal influenza vaccines uh, using messenger RNA. I think I mentioned this to you, but we also try to develop uh, pan-coronavirus vaccines that protect uh, not only against SARS-CoV-2, but uh, other uh, coronaviruses uh, as well. And, uh, and we have many collaborative projects. Uh, Again, targeting uh, uh, various species of plasmodium, the causative agent of um, uh, malaria, and uh, and uh, other uh, viruses, and also non-viral pathogens uh, as well. So uh, basically, uh, the major focus in my lab is on infectious disease vaccines, uh, primarily viral, but uh, other pathogens as well. But we also have a, a, a novel cancer vaccine project or cancer vaccine. Uh, it's not a single project, it's several projects, I should say. But we need to keep in mind that uh, in many, many cases, the requirements uh, for, um, uh, for, a, for a cancer vaccine uh, are different uh, from, a, from a prophylactic vaccine, particularly for viral vaccines, because uh, uh, we can achieve protection from many viruses uh, by inducing strong uh, uh, antibody responses. Uh, but for therapeutic cancer vaccines, we need to focus on the cellular arm of the immune system. So uh, we need to induce uh, strong CD8 positive T cell responses uh, and hope that those T cells uh, can clear uh, tumor cells. So, um, and again, I think we can reasonably say that uh, with the success of uh, COVID-19 mRNA vaccines, uh, uh, the mRNA platform uh, clearly demonstrated its viability in the infectious disease vaccine field. But for cancer vaccines, I think we still need to uh, think about the best uh, uh, methods, the best platform that we want to use, and, and, and we need to uh, uh, develop them and deliver them and test them in, uh, in clinical trials. So I think in the cancer mRNA vaccine field, uh, the breakthrough has not happened yet. But I really hope that uh, it will happen in the, in, in the in the very near future. So these are the most important uh, topics in my lab. And since uh, I'm a messenger RNA expert, obviously we do a lot of basic studies. We want to improve our messenger RNA. So we would like to uh, figure out how to tailor the immunogenicity of mRNA for different purposes. And um, uh, we also work on the development of certain um, uh, delivery molecules with, with several collaborators that can help to develop uh, new types of vaccines, for example, vaccines that can induce mucosal immune responses. Which makes me think that the advantage that you mentioned earlier that the mRNA vaccine platform has, uh, which is the ability to deliver multiple mRNAs at, in the same vaccine, I would imagine that that would then also be an advantage uh, for uh, cancer vaccine development in a sense that you could probably uh, co-deliver um, mRNAs encoding for proteins that'll help you skew your immune response in the way that you wish. So I could see, definitely see how uh, you can manipulate the system and tweak it to make it, uh, to adapt it to, and make it suitable for, for uh, cancer therapy. Yeah, I completely Sorry. agree. Uh, and again, I think the second key that uh, for cancer vaccines that we need to develop a platform that uh, can activate uh, 
uh, that can induce a very strong uh, CD8 positive T cell activation. Uh, and still, we, we need to keep in mind that the, the vaccine should be safe. This is a very, this is the most, one of the most important requirements for, for vaccines that they, they, they have to be safe. Uh, and we need to find the balance between the strength of immune activation uh, and the, the and the adverse events. So you already touched actually on uh, many of the aspects related to uh, my next, uh, which actually my last question for you, which is um, that's actually a set of questions. Uh, uh, overall, how do you feel that the mRNA vaccine platform has changed our field, uh, gene uh, and cell therapy, and uh, in more general sense, how do you envision the future of this technology? And you, again, you've already touched on several aspects of that. So um, uh, I think uh, it's uh, it, it's crystal clear that uh, messenger RNA vaccines um, were basically the game changers during the COVID-19 pandemic, and they saved uh, uh, millions of lives uh, in the past, uh, let's say, three years. So um, again, it's, it's, it's clear that we can certainly uh, develop uh, new and very potent uh, infectious disease vaccines uh, yeah. using uh, you know, the messenger RNA lipid nanoparticle vaccine uh, technology. And uh, in a broader context, I think we just started to uh, determine the range of applicability uh, of messenger RNA. Uh, I, I, my opinion is that uh, we will be able to use it uh, to uh, cure uh, various types of diseases. We, we will be able to uh, use it to um, develop uh, brand new or, or better uh, 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 infectious disease vaccines. So my hope is that we can come up, for example, with a, with a uh, very uh, potent uh, and safe uh, universal influenza vaccine uh, that we can use uh, in the coming years. But again, We'll see, uh, we'll see what happens. There are many uh, clinical trials underway, so by, by the various companies. Some of them are in phase two, some of them are already in phase three. So uh, I really hope that those trials will be uh, successful and uh, we will see some uh, new mRNA-based uh, products in the market in the next couple of years. Yeah, thank you so much. It was uh, a pleasure. Uh... And, and highly interesting to learn about your your work, uh, about your insights, hearing your insights on uh, the mRNA vaccine technology development. And it also sounds like uh, there are more shots into my own arm coming up out of, uh, mm -hmm. directly out of your work. Uh, so thank you for uh, helping to protect us from these diseases. And um, you know, going forward, of course, we wish you all the best with uh, the development of these exciting technologies and thank you again thank you very much for having me it was my pleasure thank you <laughs>